Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, Dopa for short. This is a place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So this is autonomic nervous system we have for today. Auto, auto. Auto means what? Self. That means it's a nervous system that is automatic, that controls itself involuntary. You understand that now? Unlike the voluntary muscles, especially the ones that you use to move around, move your legs, move your every, you are in full control of that. But the autonomic nervous system supplies glands, effectors, you know effectors are glands and muscles, supplies muscles and glands that you cannot control. So they are actually the major basis for homeostasis. You understand that control, automatic control of the function of the body, okay? Functioning to increase and decrease different, the nervous part of it. Okay, you have the endocrine chemical part, the endocrine system that's also involved in homeostasis, maintaining balance. This one is doing it through electrical means, nervous system. But both of them are involuntary. You have no control whatsoever about them. So that's 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 what this is. Okay, they supply smooth muscles of the heart. Now you're not the one controlling your heart beat. You're not the one controlling how your intestines are moving they are moving on their own so that that's what happens okay so this autonomic nervous system they actually divided into two you know one of the underlying principles of physiology is that the body works through multiple control systems that function in opposition to each other so it's just like the brake and the throttle of a car as you are press you are pressing the throttle to accelerate okay you are not, you are removing your leg from the brake. You can't do the two at the same time. Okay, as you are pressing on the brake, you are removing your leg from the accelerator. So that's how they function. And they are known as what? One of them, parasympathetic. Okay, parasympathetic nervous system. The second one sounds almost like it. it's called sympathetic. Sympathetic nervous system so when you look at the two how they function this one functions as the accelerator why this one functions like the brake most of the time okay we're going to look at how they function the effects on various organs okay so let's go right into it the organization how are they organized now this one Parasympathetic is also known as the cranial sacral outflow. Okay, why this one is also known as thoraco lumbar outflow. What do we mean by all this? It's talking about their origin where they originate from okay when we're talking about these nerves from their origin they assemble in a place called ganglion ganglion just a collection of nerve cell bodies and so on to integrate different impulses for better performance okay then the nerve after the ganglion is called post ganglionic why the one before the ganglion is called pre ganglionic okay just know that so the difference between these two in the arrangement apart from, is that this one originates from the head structures in the head cranial then and structures in the sacral segment of the spinal cord okay cranial nerves three seven nine 10 oculomotor facial 
glossopharyngeal vagus okay then it now gave some space and then sacral segment s2 to s4 okay so craniosacral so that's where they originate from the cranium okay preganglionic but the thing is that the this one the preganglionic neuron is very long in the sense that the ganglion is located very near the effectors either the glands or the smooth mode that they supply or even inside it sometimes why right? this postganglionic is very short okay unlike this one they are almost equal both the pre and post okay that's by the way a side difference so this one now toracolumba means that they originate the preganglionic originate from the thoracic segment t1 to t12 okay and then the lumbar segment l1 l2 okay so t1 to t12 and then l1 l2 all right toracolumbar outflow so that's where they originate from so this is how they are arranged the organization of this one then in this one the ganglionic arrangement of this sympathetic you can divide it into two some textbook will say three but let's let's just use two one of them is called paravertebral paravertebral ganglion okay the way the ganglion is arranged just by the side of the spinal cord that's why it's called paravertebral okay it's also called paired the paired ganglion why the other one is called pre vertebral ganglion and it's called unpaired unpaired so that is that is it so this one is also known another name it has again its sympathetic chain sympathetic chain okay this one also has an, a third name apart from this it's called collateral collateral ganglion okay so you just need to just know that by the way then you now go to the post ganglionic the post ganglionic in the parasympathetic the post ganglionic 75 percent 75% of postganglionic neurons are supplied by the vagus. You, can you imagine that? One particular nerve is doing 75% of the job. 75% supplied by the vagus nerve. You just need to know that. Okay? Then in this one, of course, all these S2, they supply structures below and all of that. Okay? So, but this one is where you need to now really know how they are organized. T1 supplies head, T2 neck, then T3 to T6 thorax, okay? Then T7 to T11 abdomen, then T12 to L2. You now have the legs, okay? The lower limb, okay? The lower limb and perineum, okay? So that's how they are arranged. You just need to understand this arrangement. That's by the way. So the next thing you're going to be looking at is very interesting. In fact, nobody even needs to be asking you all this, maybe MCQ. But if they want to ask you a very serious question, is the effect. Of because they have like opposite effects and there's a secret I will tell you to make you to understand their effects without having to cram anything all right so don't go anywhere after this break all right you're welcome back so now let's talk about the effects you know said break an accelerator now look at the secret this one the nickname as it relates to the effect is called 
flight or fight actions. Flight has to run away or to fight. Emergency. Then this one is known as rest and digest function. Okay? So this one is promoting a state of rest, digestion, okay, relaxation, rest. This one is action, fight, or to run, either to run away from danger or to fight and defend yourself against danger. So now, on the various body organs, what do you think the body needs to do? The changes that need to occur in the body for it to be able to adequately either run or fight. Now let's start with the eyes and just go down. Just, I just mentioned about four or five or six organs of the body. So in the eyes, the sympathetic nervous system, the release, of course, in the postganglionic, the release adrenaline, okay? Adrenaline, also known as epinephrine and no epinephrine okay adrenaline no adrenaline right there in the books so the effect for example in the eyes if you want to run away from danger you need to see very well where you are going to where you are running to so what does it do it causes pupillary dilation your pupils they dilate so they open and become wider so you can see better are you seeing it now you don't need to cram anything so the effect of sympathetic on the eyes is pupillary dilatation. This one is the opposite, pupillary constriction. Are you seeing it now? Let's go to the heart. You want to run. You want to fight. What do you think will happen? You need energy. So because of that, your heart will beat faster to pump blood to your muscles that are doing the work. Is that not so? So, the effect of the sympathetic nervous system on the heart is to increase heart rate. Boom, 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 boom. Starts beating faster. Not just heart rate, the force of contraction. Heart rate and force of contraction. Why this one is the opposite? This one reduces heart rate. Okay? So, you see, you, you see how they, they, they function. Let's go to the lungs now. When you're doing a lot of work, your body is using a lot of energy, needs more blood, it needs a lot of resources. One of them is oxygen, it needs more oxygen. When you want to fight, you need more oxygen. You are breathing faster, don't you? Is that, is that not so? So, the effect of the sympathetic nervous system in the lungs, specifically now the bronchioles, okay? Those are the, that's the part of the lungs that is surrounded by smooth muscles. No smooth muscles are involuntary, okay? Smooth muscles. That's where you have smooth muscles. So we are talking about the bronchioles when we are talking about the lungs. Sympathetic. It opens it up so that more oxygen, more air can enter. So it causes bronchial dilation. Sympathetic. Are you seeing it now? Then parasympathetic causes bronchial constriction. So that's how you just begin to go in the GIT. The muscles surrounding the intestine. When you are fighting, is that the best time to be eating and to be digesting food? No! From this name, you see it, rest and digest. So the parasympathetic promotes digestive functions. So the contractions of the muscles of the intestine is parasympathetic. This one opposes it. It causes relaxation. Okay? No contraction of the smooth muscles makes them halt but in this one this one promotes contraction peristalsis movement of you see how they, they go together rest and digest so that's how it happens in different organs of the body the sweat gland this one makes the sweat gland to start secreting a lot of sweat of course you are walking so that's how it happens the blood let's go to the bladder now if you are running or you are fighting, is that the best time to urinate? Ask yourself that. Is that the best time to urinate? No! When you are relaxed, you urinate. So what does this one do? The urination happens, the parasympathetic promotes the contraction. If you want to urinate, the bladder will contract. The bladder is smooth muscles. 
detrusion muscle. It's a smooth muscle. So parasympathetic promotes contraction of the bladder. Then it will relax the sphincter. Okay? There's, there's, there's urethral sphincter there. So it causes relaxation so that it will pass. So contraction of the bladder muscle, that's the detrusor muscle, and relaxation of the internal urethral sphincter. This one does the opposite. It causes relaxation of, so it opposes urination, causes relaxation of the detrusor muscle, the muscle, smooth muscle of the bladder, and constriction of the internal you see how it did. So it's just logic, just understand. You don't need to cram it. In. So these are the effects, okay, of the two divisions of the autonomic system on various body organs. You need to know them. Alright? So that's all you need to know about this autonomic nervous system. Alright? So I'm gonna see you in the next video.